Welcome, in this video we're going to make a database connected web page. So, we already have a database that we connected earlier in Microsoft uh, SQL uh, Server. And it consists of these columns, ID, name, title, and money. Now notice here that money earned is of type money in SQL Server, okay? So keep that in mind, this is of type money. Now, crank up Visual Studio Express 2013 for web. You can do that by opening in... Uh, here where it says Visual Express 2013 for web. Click that uh, green looking ribbon. When you do that, it's going to bring up a window that looks like this roughly. Okay, at this point we need to make a web page. So, well, I got to disconnect this for a second. There you go. Alright, so you make a click on new website here. Choose the ISP.NET empty website. Leave the settings below as they are. Click OK. Now at this point, what we are going to do is connect to a database server. But right? before, even before we do that, click on Solution Explorer. If you don't see Solution Explorer, click on View and then Solution Explorer over here. Then you're going to right click and then you're going to hit Add and you're going to add a web form. Leave the name as default. Click OK. There you go. So it looks like that. Now, now that you have this in place, what's the next step? Well. We get a simple HTML template. That's all it is. We need to add life to all of this. HTML is the hypertext markup language. Uh, it's basically, you know, the, it's a markup code that gives structure to web pages. Okay. <clears throat> now, on the left side is a toolbox. If you don't see the toolbox, you go to View and then Toolbox. And it's going to give you access to all of these. Expand the one that says Data and then choose a Grid View. So left click on the mouse, drag and drop and release. And it gives us this here. All right. Now notice right now in source view, if you look at what we've just dropped in, it added a small amount of code that basically says the ID of the control. And a control is nothing but some pre-built functionality that's being given to us already. Instead of having to make a grid view by hand, we can just drag and drop it and it's got a lot of features built in already. All right. So this is the simplified version of something that's actually under the surface, far more complicated. You don't want to deal with that. So we have this here. Now, um, <clears throat> click Design, click this, click the Smart Tag, as that's called, and then choose Auto Format. Choose something like Snowy Pine. Apply. Click OK. And now look very carefully. When you go back to source view, all of this code here has been added because we've just added styling information, you see? So all of that encoding that you see here has been added to the grid view control. There you go. So now we need to make a database connection. So basically tap down, or, well, you know, put your cursor here and hit enter and then it brings it down online. Or if you want, you can just do it in source view. You know, we can even delete this if you want. And from the data here, you're going to grab and drag an SQL data source and then release it. And there it is. So go back to design. Now remember, this control will not be visible in the page. It's not a visible control. It's a logical control that operates behind the scenes to allow the page to communicate with a database. So click this tag here, configure data source. And now, right now we need a connection string. So click new connection. And now you're going to type the name of the server. So Tom's PC in my case slash Tom's SQL server. And assume that, assuming it finds the server, you can expand this drop down and it's going to find a database called uh, MyDBase. Click test connection. Perfect. Perfect. It gives you a connection string that says data source equals Tom's PC, SQL server, initial catalog equals MyDBase, and integrated security true. So these are essential details. Name of server, initial catalog is the database, and integrated security means. Remember, when you installed SQL Server, you should have used Windows Authentication, so it's all integrated. Click Next. Click Next. All right. Now, click this off for one second. If you had trouble connecting to SQL Server X, uh, 2014, back here. Okay, notice that we haven't yet actually connected to it. If you do this, right-click and you choose Add SQL Server, and if you get an error at this point, 
Okay, you will have to add an update to uh, Visual Studio to take care of the issue. So what you will do is basically go to Tools and Extensions and Updates. And either under Updates, and I already have this update installed. So if you look at Installed, you see these are the installed ones. Okay, so make sure that your updated uh, things look just like mine here to make this work properly. That you have the same functionality. So in the updates, you know, if you have a couple here, you know, make sure that only this one is left at the end and install the other stuff. When you go through that process of installing the update, it will take a considerable amount of time to download and install the update and then run it so that it's actually applied. And at the end, of course, you have to reboot your computer. So that will be probably an hour and a half of a, of a process. It's a big thing. So download, install the update, reboot your computer, and then return to this point if you have issues connecting. All right, click close. However, after that, you have no trouble. You should be able to come back here, choose Add SQL Server. This should appear, Microsoft SQL Server 2014 dialog box. Click Connect. And when you do this, expand this. Expand databases, expand my dbase, expand tables, and you have dbo on dot table underscore one. See? And you have columns here. If you expand this, these are exactly what we've made earlier. You see? Now notice here, remember, this is a money. Right? This is the data format here is money. For title is character, for name is character, and this one here is an integer, and it's the ID, the primary key. It's the one that is used to identify each record uniquely. All right, so for our purposes, this is all good. Now, go back to this, click on this. Click the smart tag, configure data source. Make a new connection, type Tom's PC SQL, uh, Tom's SQL server. From the drop down, choose my DBase or whatever you, you happen to call yours. Test the connection, perfect. Click OK. Expand this. There's a connection string. This is uh, the name of the server, the source of the data. Initial catalog is the database, and then integrated security means uh, we don't have to specify any additional login information. So remember, when you install the SQL Server, you should have used Windows Authentication during that process. Click Next. Click Next. And now at this point, notice we get a basic query. Select star from table underscore one. Let's change that to name, title, and money earned. And notice that money earned is aliased automatically as money underscore earned. Now let's apply a, a, where, a where clause. And we're going to go by say money earned is greater than, that's what this means. Okay, so let's go over these. Equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal to. Let's go with greater than. Now for the source, you can even read the values in from a text box within the page. For our purposes, if you just go with none, and you type here, say, 100,000, that's the default value, click Add. This thing here where it says money underscore earned is a parameter. It's a quantity that can be varied. After all, I chose 100,000, but I'm going to show you how to change that in a minute. So remember, a parameter or a variable is a quantity that can be varied. We indicate it by having a little at money earned. See that? That's a little at. That means this is a variable quantity. Click OK. And there's our little query, you see? Now, let's add an order by for sorting. All right, so um, say money earned, and say do a descending. And again, the query is modified. Click OK. Click Next. Test the query. It's going to bring up a window that says Parameter Values Editor. Remember, the money underscore earned is a parameter. It's a changeable quantity. So in this case, we are setting it equal to 100,000. Also keep in mind that you see the type of it has been recognized as decimal, but we initially configured the type to be money. So there's an interpretation that has to happen between the data type in SQL Server and the one that is, you know, the way this is shown here. So click OK. And there it is. You see that? So 850, 250, 150, and it's sorted, you know, from uh, biggest to smallest because we put descending as the option. So go back to previous, choose order by, change this to ascending, and ascending is not shown. That's the default one. That's why it's not shown. Click OK. Click Next. Test the query. Leave the set to 100,000. Click OK. 
and now it's going from 150, 250 to 850, like that. So it's going from smallest to largest. All right, click Finish. At this point, if you go to Source and place a cursor here, hit Enter, we have an actual query built into our program. See? So select name, title, money earned, as money earned. So we have value seeing from table one. We have record selection based on money earned. And then we have ordering or sorting. Remember, sorting is the most expensive part of a process, as we saw. Um, <clears throat> now, here where it says select parameters, you have parameter, default value is 100,000. Uh, the name is money earned and type is decimal. If you want, you can change it here to 200,000 or whatever you want it to be. Obviously, you can also read that from, you know, uh, from a box also, okay? Or a text box, if you wanted to, you could read that value from there. All right, now, let's go back to the design view. And now we need to establish the connection between the controls, otherwise it will not work. So click the smart tag, choose data source, choose SQL data source 1, enable and now look very carefully. See how there's a money underscore earned? That's not a pretty thing. So click Edit Columns, choose Money Earned, change the header text here to Money Earned without the underscores so it looks a little more pretty. Click Enter. Okay. And now you see it looks a little more professional. Click it again. This is set. Choose Enable Sorting. Notice it underlines the field names or the column names. Now we can actually sort by those. And at this point, if you go to source and you choose grid view, place a cursor and then hit enter. So it breaks it down one line. You see it says data source ID equals SQL data source one. Now we have a connection between the connection object and the grid view. So it should work as expected. All right, so design view, and let's uh, hit Google Chrome, run it all. We are loading this into a browser at this point. Let me turn that off. And here what we have is localhost 57900. Localhost is a local computer, naturally enough. 57900 is um, a logical software port, and default at ASPX is the name of the page. And there it is. You see it's sorted, as we said, initially. However, once you have it sorted initially, and you click this, you can resort it. You see, now it's from 850 down to 150. And also notice when you click a title, so that little icon flashes the page. That means we're getting stuff from the server. And notice this is a server control because it's regenerated. Every time you grab a fresh copy of the page, the data is updated. Okay, things are sorted, updated, and what have you. Okay, but we've just made a database connected page with a minimum amount of programming. If you will right click and choose inspect element, there's another thing that has to be studied, which is here you will have, uh, where is it? Div, this, this div here, right here. Okay, no. Come on. See, this whole control, as far as the browser is concerned, is nothing but a plain HTML table. That's it. Okay, so that grid view, which has a very sophisticated functionality, is rendered to the browser as HTML. There you go. Okay. All right, so let's shut this down. Unload that from memory. There you go. So what you have just learned is something very sophisticated. If you want, come over here. Check this value to 200,000. Hit Google Chrome. Relaunch it. Obviously, the value could be read in from you know some other source. It's not a. Okay, and I notice only the 250 and the 850 show because these are the only records that have you know satisfied the condition. Remember, the condition is given by where. Okay, and remember this thing here, money underscore earned as a parameter, so it's a changeable quantity. You can sit there and you can change this number, and that new changed value is passed into the query, and the query is updated, and the results on the screen as a result are changed. There you go. So I shut this down. This is available, this code, as a PDF in the sidebar. There you go. And what you've just seen is the you know something quite real and a little more sophisticated than a simple query that obviously is useful, but 
you know, today you got to make a database. Uh, the apps you use online are connected to databases. So that's a separate process, as you can see, that is quite involved, but still learnable. Everything here is learnable if you do it hard enough every single day. You can absolutely master it. All right, so thanks very much, and I'll see you in another video.